My superpower is translating complicated medical information that people are then compelled to repeat at small social gatherings. For example, a number of years ago, I was asked to write an ophthalmic education program. When I was writing about cataracts, I opened it with the word cataract comes from the Latin word waterfall. Because when you have a cataract, you see like you're looking through a waterfall. And people say, oh, and I love when that happens. So, when people heard that I had written a science documentary short that won a bunch of awards and has been translated into nine languages and made it all the way to the Cannes Film Festival in France, I got to walk the red carpet and everything. People would ask, Dr. Wendy, what's the film about? To which I reply, zebrafish. And the, oh, wow, so many of you are tilting your heads. I swear I just heard someone make the Scooby-Doo sound. Arr! Really? But seriously, when it comes to biomedical research, zebrafish could be the salvation of the human species. They're practically people. Yes, I'm talking about those little striped minnows you can buy at any aquarium store for a few bucks. <laughs> Perhaps I should give you some context. <laughs> Remember around 18 years ago, there was the Human Genome Project. And that was supposed to, uh, that was supposed to provide us um, personalized and uh, precision medicine. So what happened with that? Well, achieving that benchmark is just way more complicated. Think of it like this. The Human Genome Project gave us the dictionary of us. So we have the words, but there's no instruction manual. And that's where zebrafish comes in. Turns out, not only is the zebrafish immune system remarkably similar to ours, the human species and zebrafish share 70% of the same genes. And 84% of our genes known to be associated with human genetic disease have a zebrafish counterpart. Zebrafish have become instrumental in so many fields of research, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, rare diseases, not to mention because zebrafish respond to drugs so similarly to us, they've emerged as a game changer in drug discovery. Let's see if I nearly, um, there we go. Every organ system that we have, we can model in a zebrafish. They have over 25,000, over 26,000 protein-coding genes. That's the largest gene set of any vertebrate sequenced to date. And yes, it's totally normal to forget that zebrafish are vertebrates. They have a spinal cord, they have a brain, they have blood, um, et cetera and they have a gallbladder. You can't study gallbladder disorders with rats. Rats don't have gallbladders. Zebrafish do. You know what else zebrafish do? They make estrogen. Right now, we can take a woman's individual personal breast cancer tumor, and we can cut it up into tiny little pieces, and we can insert them into zebrafish embryos, and in five days, we'll know which drug or combination of drugs should work best for her. The same is true with pancreatic cancer. In fact, clinical trials for pancreatic cancer are starting right now. And the maintenance costs. Zebrafish <laughs> blow mice out of the water. Zebrafish maintenance costs are about one one-thousandth compared to mice. Your typical lab fish tank houses about 70 zebrafish at a cost of about 6.5 cents a day for the whole tank. Your typical mouse cage houses five mice at a cost of about 90 cents a day. And boy, do they procreate. <laughs> zebrafish lay around 200 self-sustaining transparent eggs 
per week, averaging nearly 9,000 offspring in her lifetime. The mouse, five to 10 pups per litter, for a total offspring count of 300. Now, the reason that matters is that rapid reproduction rate is ideal for generational studies. Toxicologists use zebrafish routinely for screening new chemicals, which has given us huge insights into human embryo development and birth defects. And zebrafish make all the major neurotransmitters, like serotonin and dopamine. Can you imagine? which is why they have become instrumental for studying brain and chemical neurotoxicity, including how environmental toxins impact our reproductive health, the health of our children and our children's children. Another topic that people tend not to talk about, when working with rats or mice to gain access to their embryos during the gestation process, requires we go in surgically. The mother is usually sacrificed, and the embryos, they don't survive long outside the mother. Not the case with zebrafish. They have those clear, self-sustaining, transparent eggs. And from the one-cell stage to, from, well, from conception to birth, with zebrafish, takes three days. Watch this time-lapse footage. It's stunning. And that transparency allows us to non-invasively observe their organ development and biological processes in a whole, living, breathing, intact animal, as opposed to only slices of tissue under a microscope. Zebrafish can also suffer from depression. In fact, when we have to isolate a zebrafish from the rest of the fish in the tank, they have to be kept company. So we use these gorgeous fluorescent zebrafish that come in fabulous colors like neon green and blue and purple, which is really helpful for us because that way when we're looking into the fish tank, we can tell the sick fish from the companion fish because they're color-coded. <laughs> You've probably seen those gorgeous fluorescent fish at aquarium pet stores. They weren't originally designed to be ornamental. They were designed by scientists to selectively fluoresce in the presence of environmental toxins. Cool, right? Oh, and for studying brain diseases like Parkinson's and autism, take autism. As explained by one of the scientists in the zebrafish movie, he used the word cool, <laughs> he said. One of the cool things about zebrafish is that we can genetically introduce changes into the zebrafish embryo that is almost identical to that of a person with autism. Except with the zebrafish, we can watch from the one cell stage all the way through to the equivalent of a newborn child. It's just like an MRI, except in a fish. Oh, and for any scientists out there, quick sidebar. <laughs> for generating transgenic or knockout zebrafish lines requires a simple DNA or RNA injection. And back to everybody else, <laughs> for testing drug efficacy, you know, how well the drug works, we just put the zebrafish in the water that has the drug in it. Speaking of drugs, zebrafish can suffer from addiction. Remember, they have all the same brain chemicals as we do. So there was this amazing study done where there was zebrafish in a tank, and the research scientists set it up so that every time the zebrafish swam over this little orange square, food was automatically released. So, in pretty short order, the zebrafish figured out, if they're hungry, go over to the little orange square. It worked great. Classic Pavlov. Then the scientists changed things up. Instead of getting food dispensed when they swam over the little orange square, they got the opioid hydrocodone. Yeah, that opioid. 
Within five days of those zebrafish having the ability to self-administer hydrocodone, they never left that little orange square. On a much lighter note, <laughs> zebrafish can fully regenerate their internal organs. A severed spine, it self-repairs, they grow back a new one. A damaged heart, a damaged kidney, no problem, it regenerates. You know how when an iguana loses its tail, and it'll grow back a new one, but it's usually gray or black, but it works. It just doesn't, you know, match the rest of the iguana. Not the case with zebrafish. When zebrafish regenerate, they look exactly the same. You would never be able to tell. They can even regenerate the retina in their eyes. In fact, we've taken the zebrafish um, retina repair gene, <laughs> and we've put it into a mouse. So that's fish to mammal. And over time, that mouse could see again. Zebrafish can also regenerate all of their fins. OK, I heard that. I know, people don't have fins. I understand. But we know how to flip the fin gene in a zebrafish. And when we flip the fin gene, instead of it growing back a fin, it grows back a limb. Imagine if we could figure out how to do that for people. I know it sounds like science fiction, but about 300 million years ago, the human species and zebrafish split off on the evolutionary tree. So our fundamental physiology, it's just not that different. Zebrafish are even in outer space, really, really. Because the zebrafish muscle physiology is so similar to ours, they're being studied on the International Space Station to help us better understand the effects of gravity on muscle mass. According to the National Institutes of Health's intramural research program, the timing of the adoption of zebrafish couldn't be better, as mouse studies often fail to translate to humans. We all know that healthcare spending is out of control. With zebrafish, we can get better data, spend pennies on the dollar, and get those results in a fraction of the time. So why isn't everybody using zebrafish for their research? Because it's really difficult to convince the world that zebrafish are practically people. I mean, really, who would have thought? A little aquarium storefish might just be the salvation of the human species. Thank you.